In this video, I'll show you how to sweep pick arpeggios at very fast speeds and a really cool trick called finger rolling technique to make your sweep picking arpeggios very easy to play at lightning speeds. Now I'll teach you what the finger rolling technique is, how to learn it, how to practice it, and how to master it. So this will allow you to play through arpeggios much faster because they become a lot easier to play. Hi, I'm Tom Hess. When I first learned to build my guitar speed using sweep picking, I could play certain arpeggios pretty quickly, but others were really hard for me. Once I learned how to master the finger rolling technique, those same arpeggios, the ones which were the hardest for me to play before, became the easiest to play. And I could play them at super high speeds. I mean, some of them between 1700 and 2000 notes a minute. I've taught the same technique to several thousand guitar players over the years, and today I want to share this wonderful technique with you. Let's take a look at example number one. This is based on a simple E major chord, this one, and you can play it up an octave higher, starting at the 14th fret, and you notice that we have four downstrokes in a row, that's our sweep picking motion, and then we've got a pull off here, upstroke and then pull off, and then 12th fret, upstroke, upstroke, upstroke. So there's nothing really hard here for the right hand. The challenge is in the left hand to roll the finger over from the second string to the first string without making these two notes bleed together. You want to avoid that sound for now. If you like that sound, that's great, but when you turn the distortion on, the gain on, it's not going to sound so nice. So you want to separate them. Now, the most important thing here to do is that when you play the note on the second string, this 12th fret, don't preemptively think, oh, I'm going to have to roll my finger over, so I'm going to lay the finger down flat as if I'm going to bar it. Okay, don't do that. It'll be cleaner if you play the note with the tip of your first finger like normal. And then after that, you roll the finger over. And as you roll it over, the tip of the index finger comes off of the second string. It's still touching the second string. But as soon as I roll it over, notice you don't hear that second string ringing out anymore. It's dead, okay? So that's what we want to happen. We want that string to be killed simply by rolling the finger over, the tip comes off the string, still in contact with the string, but it releases the pressure of the string against the fret, and that kills the note. Now we're free to play the high E string with the pad of the first finger right here, so not the tip, right here. So we're not doing this. We're not going to be moving the finger over, we're just rolling it over. And then when we get here, we're again using the pad of the finger to play the first string. Then we're going to roll our finger back this way, and when that happens, the first string is released. We don't hear it anymore. And that's exactly what we want to have happen. We want that string one to be killed when we roll the finger over. So we don't want this, because then it bleeds together. We want. All right, so let's talk a little bit more about this rolling technique. First of all, why do we roll? Why do we use these uh, two different strings with the same finger? Why are we doing this instead of this? We could do that, right? We could do this, and then we avoid the roll altogether. Well, I suppose you could do that, but it's going to be harder and slower to do that, to move this finger from here to here at super high speeds, it's going to be difficult to do. Plus, it puts an awkward stretch here to get to that note. It's just going to be easier. Once you master the technique, this is so much easier to just do that, because this is going to be a faster movement than this is. This is going to take a lot more effort to make this happen than this will. This is going to be much easier. So again, and the sound that we want is separated notes not 
bleeding together. Okay, and the other principle we talked about earlier is that the tip of the finger touches the lower string. You play the lower string, in this case string two, with the tip of the finger right here. Then string one, we play with the pad of the finger right here by rolling that over. Now, how exactly is the finger moving is the next question you ought to be asking. Well, it's actually a compound movement. There's more than one thing happening here at the same time. So there's two things I want you to pay attention to. The first one is this knuckle of my first finger. This knuckle is going to collapse like this. So when I'm not rolling, it's curved. The knuckle is engaged, okay? It's curved. When I roll my finger over, this knuckle collapses. So now the finger is straight here at this point. So that first knuckle is collapsing. That's the first principle, okay? When we go backwards or when we descend, we go like this. We start with the knuckle already collapsed and then we re-engage the knuckle or the arc of the finger to move from string one till string two, okay? Now there's a second thing. I said this was a compound movement. The other thing I want you to pay attention to is the knuckle line, the fretting hand knuckle line. What is a knuckle line? If you make a fist, your knuckles right here, this is the knuckle line, all right? Ignore my first finger, just watch the knuckle line. You'll see that the whole knuckle line is moving, okay? And the knuckle line moves by moving my hand back. My whole arm actually moves. It's like doing this, okay? So that's the movement that's happening along with this first knuckle collapsing and re-engaging, collapsing, re-engaging. So that happens by pulling my hand back, I'm pulling it down towards the floor and then back up towards my face. Again, watch the knuckle line. Now this is really important to make this easier and smoother and to get the speed. If you just try and do this with your finger, which is really hard to do without moving the rest of your hand, it's really hard, try it. It's really hard to engage this knuckle and then collapse it and engage it and collapse it while holding everything else stationary. It's not that easy to do quickly and it's not easy to do quickly and maintain control, okay? This, moving the knuckle line, again, the whole hand is moving, the whole arm actually is moving, is a lot easier. Knuckle line drops down, this knuckle collapses, we go back the other way, this knuckle re-engages at the same time that the knuckle line comes forward towards the ceiling and towards your face. All right, so let's take a look at example number two. And all we're gonna do here is we're just gonna go back and forth uh, on the 12th fret with the first finger. Now really, as I speed up, what you may have noticed is that this knuckle, because of the speed, didn't even really have a lot of time to engage you know, disengage, re-engage, disengage, re-engage. Here I'm relying on the knuckle line to do most of the motion of pulling this finger off string two and onto string one. See, when I go slow, you'll see this knuckle, on, this knuckle here engaging and disengaging. But when we speed it up, it's engaging and disengaging a little bit, but most of the motion is coming from dropping the knuckle line back and putting it forward. Now let's take a look at example number three. In this example, we're changing the chord from E major to E minor. Okay, and here we've got a triple roll where we've got three strings. You notice we've got the 14th fret with the third finger, and then we've got 12th fret on string three, 12th fret on string two, 12th fret on string one. Then we've got 15th fret with our fourth finger, pull off, 12th fret on string two, and you hear that with bleeding together there, that was an error, we don't want that, so we're gonna clean that up. And then 
it sounds like this going back down. Okay, now, so what we have to do here is when we go from string four to string three, it's super important now that we really play this first note, the note, sorry, the first uh, note that this finger plays, which is string three, with the tip of the finger only. If you start doing this, it's gonna be really hard to roll across three strings. If you start like this, it'll be a lot easier. So we're gonna, again, we'll watch what happens. This collapses, the knuckle line comes down, and now the, this, this knuckle is already collapsed. We cannot further collapse it, okay? Maybe if you're double jointed or something, you could do something crazy, but since I'm not, I'm limited. I cannot collapse this any further. All I can do is drop the knuckle line down, this right here, drop it down further. When I drop it down further, that releases string two. String three is already released because the fingertip is now off the string by this point. When I say off the string, I mean off string three. So here, we're still in contact with string two. What you're hearing there is a little bit of the harmonic. It's not the actual note. So we've got string two, then drop the knuckle line down. String two is now released. Now we're free to do this. Now when we do the hammer or the pull off, you heard a little bit of bleeding there because I did not re-engage the knuckle line back up. Okay, so if you don't do that, you're gonna get that bleeding. We don't want that, okay? At least not for our purposes today. So the knuckle line comes back up, that mutes the string one, and now we roll over, we re-engage this knuckle to get the tip back on string three, and that releases string two. There you have it. In example four, we wanna isolate just the roll of the first finger across three strings. Next, I wanna share with you a very common problem that many guitar players have in mastering this rolling technique. What you'll see next is an excerpt of a lesson that I taught at a recent HESFEST live event. So in your you know, fretting hand, when you do the rolling, the reason why you're, you're hearing that bleeding is because there's one small little piece of the rolling technique you're just missing right now. One small little piece, that's all it is. So whenever we're, we're rolling, especially with these, these three string rolls, okay, you've got the two string roll motion down okay. Okay, there's, there's no bleeding between the first two strings, so this bit is really good. Okay, so you're starting the note, like any other note, we're just playing with a fingertip. Then what you're doing, which is really good, is you're collapsing that knuckle. Also really good. Here's the piece you're missing. Right now, when you go to play that next string, this is now still a bar. So right now, what you're hearing is, finger comes down, like normal, Knuckle collapses, then we still got that bar going on. So you hear those two strings ringing out together. That's where the bleeding's coming from. So, in order to fix this, all we have to do is, after we collapse the knuckle, instead of just leaving our hand down as like a little bar, our hand actually has to tilt backwards a little bit behind the neck. So I'll give you a little demonstration if you're a little bit unsure as to what I'm explaining. So I'll go right from the beginning. So we start playing like any normal note. Then we collapse the knuckle. So at this point, this finger is muting that E string. Okay, so it's not pressed down. Just muting it. To get that high E string to ring out and to mute that B string, all we have to do is roll the hand back behind the neck. From, excuse me one second. 
totally excellent, perfect diagnosis and explanation. One thing I want you to uh, observe, can you, can you demonstrate slowly again, but just don't even play, just go through the motions. This knuckle line here on Dan's hand, that's what you're gonna see go backwards once he goes from the second string to the first string. All these knuckles are gonna pull back, okay? So just watch for that. See, there was a finger collapse and then the knuckles came down. They, came, they went back. There's a collapse, now the knuckle line comes back. Okay? Mm -hmm. Go ahead and play, Dan. So, again we have, start with the fingertip. Then the knuckle collapses. Then these knuckles come back. So if we listen to that B string now, that's muted. That's never ringing out. Yeah, I'm not even thumb muting right now. That fucker ain't ringing out. Ever. Okay? So, what I want you to try, Andre, is keep doing the first part that you're doing absolutely perfectly. When it comes time to go from that B string to the E string, I just want you to focus on bringing those knuckles back behind the neck. Okay, does that make sense? Uh, yeah. Yeah? I think so, yeah. Okay, cool. Let's give that a try and see how we get on. No bleeding. There you go. That was perfectly clean, Andre. Perfect. And, and again. That was perfect. That particular time, the knuckles came back a little too early. So when you're collapsing, as Dan demonstrated, the knuckles don't go backwards yet. Only when you go from the second string to the third string do the knuckles come back. Collapse, and now pull back. Perfect. You don't, you don't even need to pull back that far. Okay? It, it, it's, it's a small movement. You don't, have, you don't have to really jerk it back. But it's, do you hear now how it's perfect? There is no blood on the guitar, no bleeding of notes together. It's perfectly clear. Excuse me, excuse me one second. Dan, you've taught this before, have you not? Yes. Did you ever teach this and have a student or a number of students not get it right the very first time? Yes. Did Andre get it right the very first time? Yes. Let's talk for a minute about how to practice this. The main thing, again, is to stick with the principles of we don't want the notes to bleed together, and we do that by only playing the bottom note, whichever one is the lowest, with the roll, with the tip of the finger, and we play the other string or strings with the pad of the finger, and that we use the knuckle line dropping down in combination with this knuckle collapsing and re-engaging in order to separate the notes together. That's the most important thing. Now, if this is new to you, if you haven't done this before, it's gonna take some patience, okay? And it might feel like you're not getting it, you're not getting it, you're not getting it, you're not getting it, no progress, no progress, and then one day it's gonna click. And when it clicks, you'll have it, okay? So this is not like, you know, practicing a scale or learning a scale where you, you, you can do it, but you do it slowly at first, and then you gradually get faster and faster and faster. And it's a gradual linear process up. This generally, this tech, rolling technique generally won't work that way. It'll feel more like not getting anywhere, not getting anywhere, not getting anywhere, and then bam, you got it, and you're ripping all over the place. It will be maybe not that dramatic, but it'll be more like an exponential curve, not like a straight line graph gradually up. Now let me know in the comments section what other topics you would like me to make new videos on. I read every single one of those comments, no matter how silly they are. Now, if you like this video, subscribe to this channel and click on that notification bell so that YouTube will notify you when I publish my next video. And then hit that like button. If you like my videos on YouTube, you'll love my personalized breakthrough guitar lessons. I'm gonna show you exactly how to transform your guitar playing from just being sort of okay to being really awesome, even if you're feeling stuck right now or are having some self-doubts. Imagine just how much better your guitar playing will be 
when you know exactly what to do and exactly how to practice and have the guidance and roadmap to get you there. I've done this for thousands of people over the years. Now, if you're willing to put in the time and practice at least 30 minutes a day and follow the things I tell you to do, if you can do that, and I know you can, I'm absolutely certain I can help you become the guitar player you want to be. Now, unlike other lessons out there floating out online, you're not gonna get some random cookie cutter lessons from me. You get lessons customized to you, who you are, what your goals are, your challenges, your strengths, your weaknesses, your learning style, experience, frustrations, and most importantly, who you want to become. So check out my Breakthrough Guitar Lessons at tomhess.net slash guitar and see if they're right for you. See you on the other side.